Hi, I'm Parni Jaggi. And we started with the interesting story, Some Words with a Mummy, written by Edgar Allan Poe in the previous videos. This is a continuation of those videos in which we are going to take up the story, Some Words with a Mummy, which is a ghost story as well as an interesting science fiction kind of a story, uh, which is different from the normal mundane storytelling technique that we go into in our daily routine. Now, uh, we know Edgar Allan Poe is well known for his satirical stories, for his uh, short stories and was a pioneer in more than one way that we discussed in the first video in this series on Edgar Allan Poe. Now, we are going to be looking into the synopsis or the plot of the story in two parts, in this video and in the coming next video. Now, we know that this is a satirical short story and it was first published in the journal, The American Review, a Whig journal of politics, literature, art and science in 1845. And uh, we notice that the story is regarded as depicting the earliest known representation of a revived Egyptian mummy, the kind of mummy that we know of in movies, in Hollywood movies, we see that a dead body is wrapped up in bandages in some kind of uh, chemical and then later on after a long period of time it is revived, reopened and revived in the form of a mummy. So we begin with the story which actually begins with the unwrapping of the mummy. Now we have the narrator in the beginning of the story who is eating his meal. He's having a Welsh rabbit in his meal and then he goes to bed for a night's sleep. And in the middle of the night, he is awakened by a friend, Dr. Ponunur. And he is summoned, called by this friend, Dr. Ponunur, to be present during the unwrapping of an Egyptian mummy at the doctor's home. Now, these people who are doctors and scientists have to get together at a particular place at the doctor's home to witness how this mummy can be unwrapped and looked into. So when the narrator arrives here, the other guests have already reached. They are already there. And these include two men who can read and speak ancient Egyptian named Mr. Glidden and Mr. Buckingham. And another man who is unnamed is a member of that group. Now, the interesting process is the process of unwrapping, unpacking, unveiling the mummy because it is kept in a box and it is hardly tightly packed in several layers. So first, when they start the unwrapping, we notice, we observe that there is an outer oblong shaped papyrus box placed in a papyrus sheath and inside the box is a coffin shaped container followed again by a third coffin made from cedar. So these are different kinds of woods, cedar wood. They are covered in plaster decorated with paintings and gold gilt. Lastly, the mummy is read. So we see that when they unveil the mummy, there are several layers. They cut into the first sarcophagus, remove this and then discover this mummy's name is written on this. Then the third and the second and the third sarcophagi are removed to reveal the body which is actually placed in this papyrus sheath which is further covered in a plaster and also decorated with paintings in gold gilt. Now after removing all this they reach the mummy and they examine the body and they find it to be in an exceptionally good condition. Although it does not look like that it has been embalmed in the normal way because they see that the skin is red and there are no cuts or incisions. So the mummy is wrapped in papyrus and as the onlookers watch, Dr. Ponner removes the wrappings. Now we see that these doctors, this team, notices that the mummy once revealed does not appear desiccated. Means that it has no cuts, 
It has no incisions. The eyes are open wide and staring while the skin has some redness to it. Unlike many mummies, there is no evidence of the internal organs or the brain having been removed. The group is puzzled as to why this mummy appears to be whole. So it is one whole piece. It hasn't been cut or desiccated into parts. Nothing has been troubled or uh, say disturbed in the body of that mummy. So before retiring for the night, they decide to experiment with electricity on the mummy. So this was the interesting twist of the story when they're surprised that nothing has been done to the body. There has been no dissection. But then they decide that they should use electricity on that mummy before they go for bed and leave the mummy at that place. Now the doctor makes incisions into the mummy to access its muscles and stimulate them with a battery and wires. Stimulation of one muscle closes the mummy's eyes which frightens the group. Now see this is a very dramatic situation we see that the kind of electrification that they give to the mummy they use electricity battery and wires to access to reach out to the muscles of this mummy and to stimulate the muscles so as soon as they reach out with that battery there is a movement in the eyes of the mummy the eyes the stimulation of one muscle closes the eyes of the mummy which is actually very frightening for that group the next incision results in the mummy lifting one of his legs and kicking the doctor out of the window. The doctor survives and a third electrical stimulation is attempted which results in the awakening of the mummy. Now this is the most dramatic event of the story as to when they charge the batteries and give electrification to the mummy this amount of electricity actually causes the mummy to awaken, get up and it kicks the doctor out of the window. So this is like a shock to the entire team as to how this mummy could get up. Now in the next section, in the next video, we're going to be looking at what happens to that mummy after it gets up. It lifts its leg, it even throws the doctor out of the window and it even uh, sits up and speaks to this people and we come to know very soon that the name of this mummy is Ala Mistakio. So what happens when Ala Mistakio sits up on that bed, on that uh, table and starts talking to this uh, team of doctors. So uh, please stay tuned for the upcoming video on some words with a mummy. Thank you.